All right, so we are going to learn to solve this minimization linear programming problem using the solver feature of Excel, which you have to have pre-installed. Okay. First of all, we have three variable cells. These are just labels for the cells. The actual cells holding the variable values will be the ones underneath that. Okay. And now we're gonna start by programming in our objective function. So we're trying to minimize an objective. It will equal six times x, and instead of putting an x, we are selecting the box that is going to store the value of x, plus eight times the y box, plus four times the z box. Okay. So we're using Excel's ability to use values stored in boxes instead of entering them ourselves. Okay. It is typical that it says zero now. Why? Because all our variables have zeros in them. Okay. Now, for our constraints, the first one, we're going to do the three pieces separate. Its left-hand side is the X box plus two times the Y box plus two times the Z box. Okay. And it is a greater than or equal to 10. So I'm storing each of the three pieces of the inequality in separate boxes. Our next inequality, 2 times x, once again I'm using the box instead of writing x, plus y plus z. Okay. It also is a greater than or equal to, this time, 24. Our final inequality we're going to enter is x plus y plus z greater than or equal to 16. The non-negativity conditions are important, but they are going to be entered as a part of the solution later in the program. So once I have my variable boxes, my objective function, and my constraints, I'm going to go to the data tab and click on solver. We can move this out of our way. With the mouse hovering in the set objective box, I'm going to click the box that is storing my objective function. I'm going to select minimize instead of maximize. Then I'm going to click on the by changing variable cells box and go and select those three boxes that I used as my variables, the X box, Y box, Z box. Clicking on the subject to constraints box and then clicking add. This will enable you to add any number of constraints that you want. You can do them one at a time, or if they're all the same inequality, you can do them all at once. These are all greater than or equal to, so I'll do them all at once. I select their left-hand sides first. Then on the drop-down menu, I choose the greater than or equal to. Then I select their right-hand sides and push OK. This is storing all three constraints at once. This box here that says make unconstrained variables non-negative is the non-negativity conditions. So if you don't have them, you need to uncheck the box. And finally, select a solving method. We would like the simplex LP method. Finally, click solve and then OK. You'll notice Excel has now filled in our variable boxes. So our answer is 808 with an objective function value of 80. You can also read off from this which constraints are binding by looking at which ones satisfy equality. So 24 does equal 24, 16 does equal 16, so our two constraints that are binding are the second and the third.